As we come on the air tonight, several San Diegans are in New Orleans fighting for the future of DACA. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Steve Price. And tonight for Carlo Chiquetto, Alliance San Diego sent a delegation down to the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals as it weighs a court decision on the future of the law protecting more than half a million people who were brought to the U.S. as children. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes talked with a local DACA recipient and their attorney. She joins us now live with details. Kirsten? Yeah, the stakes are high in this years-long legal battle where more than half a million people across the country could face the possibility of deportation. About 45,000 DREAMers call San Diego County home, according to the Regional Chamber of Commerce. I'm here at the University of San Diego, where I talked to a graduate who is a DACA recipient, and she's fighting for her right to stay in the United States right now. We also found out why states like Texas are leading this charge against DACA. Personally, for me, you know, I grew up in this country. This is the only country that I have known my entire life since I was five years old. I have built my own family. I have my daughter now. So there's, you know, a lot, a lot of stake. Andrea Tecpoyadol grew up in San Diego and graduated from the University of San Diego. She's in New Orleans, Louisiana, fighting for her right to stay in the United States. <laughs> She says her home is here in San Diego, but she's worried about what's next. What's going to come forth from this, right? Like a lot of like um, nervousness, uh, frustration, right? Because we continue to be put in a situation of like limbo um, with no stability. Half of us were able to go inside and then the other half was outside um, with a larger group of like an energy team, just, um, you know, putting chants together, making our voices heard. Texas is leading a group of Republican dominated states challenging the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals or DACA policy. The program started in 2012 under the Obama administration and has faced years of legal challenges. Texas, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, Nebraska, South Carolina, West Virginia, Kansas, and Mississippi said in court briefs that they are paying millions in health care and educational costs for DACA recipients in their states. Alliance San Diego's legal rights director, Michelle Soleri, says that's just not true. Those were general costs general cost of the state, and they couldn't narrow it down to talk about DACA recipients. Their argument doesn't make any sense. <laughs> First, uh, the health care costs are coming from those that aren't working and need to take advantage of certain programs. DACA recipients are working, and they are getting their health care coverage covered. Uh, secondly, they are paying tax <laughs> tax dollars, and the state is getting lots of money in taxes. Critics of DACA, like the Immigration Reform Law Institute, said in a statement regarding DACA earlier this year, quote, Congress has repeatedly refused to legalize DACA recipients, and no administration can take that step in its place. Now they want the law dismantled, leading to the deportation of more than half a million DACA recipients or DREAMers. Michelle says so many states rely on DREAMers' contributions particularly California and San Diego. Why should Texas's interests or outweigh the interests of the rest of the states? At the end of the day, we're talking about people. These are our friends, our community members. For me personally, they're my colleagues and dear friends of mine. And so as we move forward, we need to really think about the humanity of it all. Any ruling by the Fifth Circuit Court would likely be appealed to the Supreme Court. And DACA's fate could also hinge on the presidential election next month. Vice President Kamala Harris has voiced support for DREAMers. And despite voicing concern and support for DREAMers, former President Trump tried to end the program back in 2017. And right now it is unclear if he would attempt to end that program again if he were elected. Reporting for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Thanks so much, Kirsten. Animal rights groups are suing to stop another rodeo from being held at Peco Park next January. An emergency hearing was held today at the request of the Padres. The team asked a judge to delay the case, but the judge ruled against that request, noting the rodeo is an important issue for the community and there should be no delay in determining its future. Peco Park hosted its first ever rodeo back in January. Animal rights groups sued to try and stop it, claiming animal cruelty and that the event violates the city's code. It still went on, though, because of the short time frame between when that suit was filed and the actual event. 
Animal rights groups are suing again and looking to ultimately ban rodeos from happening in the city of San Diego. They say the Padres' request was a tactic to ensure the rodeo would go on as planned. Padres have now come in here and said, oh, let's slow this up and let's have the hearing later so we get closer to the So they want to run out the clock but get it closer and closer to the rodeo so that it's harder to get this preliminary injunction granted. Again, the judge did not rule in favor of the Padres. Now a judge expected to rule whether or not the rodeo can happen at a hearing later this month. For now, though, tickets for the rodeo are still on sale. People living near Choyas Creek are reaching out to us saying more than a dozen ADUs may be built on their cul-de-sac. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you to find out the details and whether or not this project is following the rules. I found out through next door a lady across town telling me that on Boren Street they were going to put 14 units. Then I started digging around and finding out that yes, it's true. Aurora Wilson lives on Bourne Street, but not for long. She's selling her home because of what may be coming. I love California. It's beautiful. But our politicians seem to think that it's okay to destroy single-family residents. She says SDRE Homebuyers has plans to add 14 ADUs next door. Last week, I reported on a similar project that was already under construction in Claremont by the same developer, involving 17 ADUs. At that time, I spoke with the developer's attorney. This is trying to find a solution that addresses our ongoing housing crisis, but in a responsible fashion. Skylar Hoffman, who grew up in Bay Park and Point Loma, showed me what a typical project like this ends up looking like. This is another one they completed in Claremont on Firestone Street. These are really uh, attractive units, and they're, the build quality is exceptional. And that's because we're trying to attract a certain type of tenant. You know, somebody who is responsible, somebody who's a good neighbor. Meanwhile, I've met with neighbors on Boren Street, and they're worried about parking and other things. We don't mind one unit in the back, but we do mind 14 units. I checked. They're using San Diego's ADU bonus program. For every affordable one they build, they're allowed a bonus. I looked at the permit application. It describes seven separate two-story structures, each one with two ADUs stacked on top of one another. I think because of a loophole, um, developers are building these high-density properties um, without, uh, without changing the underlying zoning requirements. I reached out to San Diego's Development Services Department, and they told me the permit application is still under review. In Redwood Village, working for you, Brian White, CBS 8. All right, Brian, thanks for following up on that. Now remember, if there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Right now, local nonprofits are making progress in the fight against homelessness. Since January, 180 people who were living on the San Diego and Sweetwater riverbeds have been moved into permanent or temporary housing. Two of the nonprofits working on this are PATH, which stands for People Assisting the Homeless, and the San Diego River Park Foundation. The River Park Foundation did a census last month. They found 423 people living on the riverbed between Ocean Beach and Santee. Today is World Homeless Day, and the Lucky Duck Foundation is marking the day by handing out sleeping bag coats to unsheltered individuals. The group distributed about 100 of the sleeping bags today. It's the first of about 4,500 the group is planning to hand out all across San Diego to provide those without a place to stay warm and protected during our cold, rainy season. These sleeping bag coats are made by Detroit-based Empowerment Plan, which is making World Homeless Day by distributing, by distributing its sleeping bags to 1,000 individuals in need across 10 major cities, including here in San Diego. Coming up, the decade-long battle to move power lines underground in La Jolla. That is still ahead. Plus, we'll have the latest on a developing situation out of Colorado. Crews there trying to rescue people trapped hundreds of feet underground in a mine shaft. And we'll show you the recovery efforts underway and trail of destruction left behind by Hurricane Milton. All right, when it comes to our forecast, we are talking about that marine layer that's going to be in our forecast tonight through tomorrow morning, extending a little bit more inland by next week. That's going to allow our temperatures to cool off, but we got one more day where they're going to bump up just a little bit. That's tomorrow. Details are ahead.